welcome to Future Hotel, Ms. Bruce. I am Hal, your robot concierge. I'm so exhausted. How soon can I check into my room? Rosie the maid finished cleaning your room this morning, and Wally already delivered your bags to your suite. Based on your history with our hotel properties, I have ordered a thin crust, gluten-free, margarita pizza, and sparkling water, no ice, to be delivered in seven and one half minutes. That sounds great. I might need a massage after that long flight. Any chance I can? Done. C-3PO, our masseuse droid, arrives at your suite at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Anything else we can do for you? Well, now that you mention it, can you please make this hotel a reality? It's true. My dream hotel is just a figment of my imagination. Or is it? The hotel industry is undergoing a dramatic change with automation and artificial intelligence. Very That's soon. Deep Roja, world traveler and expert in all things hospitality. He studies and advises some of the biggest brands in the business, and he brings his industry knowledge to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln classroom. Okay, you should switch partners now. To be able to inspire young people. <laughs> Pays your finals. It's really rewarding. I love the students. Welcome to Faculty 101, life hacks and success stories from Nebraska faculty. First up, orientation. Who is Deep Roja? When I meet Professor Jha at his office, he's just back from India and a summer stint as a professor in residence with Oberoi Hotels and Resorts. Oberoi Hotels is uh, one of what we call the jewel boxes of the industry. They run some of the most luxurious and uber luxurious properties anywhere in the world. And they are one of the masters of a highly personalized service. So what I did is they invited me to come in and basically do workshops with their managers in six cities. And as part of that, I got to stay in some of their most amazing hotels. And I was blown away by the level of creativity, talent, and hospitality. Because when I do this stuff, not only I am teaching, but I am also learning from these absolutely world-class professionals. Another professor-in-residence experience took place at the Venetian Palazzo in Las Vegas. The Venetian Palazzo is the largest five-diamond resort in the world. It has 7,066 suites and 2.25 million square feet of event or meeting space. Uh, on an average, 50,000 people visit that hotel every day. They are doing 600 check-ins an hour. Uh, they have almost 10,000 employees working on that campus. How does such a complex machine even run? And what does it entail? How much, how much energy is it consuming? You know, what, how much trash is it generating? How does the housekeepers, 800 housekeepers in any given shift, clean the rooms? And they, the, the parent company of the Venetian Palazzo owns similar very large resorts in Macau, in Singapore, and so on and so forth. And I have studied uh, some of those as well because of the work I did initially with the Venetian Palazzo. And so once again, it's a win-win, both in terms of my own professional development and bringing all of that knowledge back into the classroom to benefit students here at Nebraska. In Nebraska, Professor Ja shares his knowledge with communities and organizations. For example, I helped Nebraska City uh, develop a tourism-based community vitality plan. I have just started working with the community of Columbus, Nebraska uh, to once again create a tourism plan. So as much as I enjoy doing work internationally, I am also very active within the state and once again taking UNL's land-grant mission to actually positively impact communities within, within our state. Through his collaboration with industry, Professor Ja develops contacts that lead to internships and jobs for students. Hospitality tourism is a very, very vast field. Uh, people uh, who graduate from this uh, program, they can go in to become event planners, they can work in the hotel industry, they can work uh, with tourism bodies such as a convention visitors bureau, a state tourism commission. Uh, so the possibilities are endless. It's time for a teachable moment. 
a look inside the deep Rojah classroom. The whole nightstand would be a charging dock, essentially, and you would just put... Students in Professor Jaw's class brainstorm ideas on how to use technology in the hotel room of the future. That's, that's a phenomenal idea. The whole nightstand becomes a wireless charger. A balance of information and experience provides students with a foundation for success when they graduate. I teach in a discipline which is highly practice-orientated. That means um, employers will hire our students not only because of what they know, but more importantly, what they can do. So I always try to teach with an equal emphasis on both content and context. That means, OK, we are learning this theory or this construct, but why is this important and how can we apply this in the real world? Because that's what they will be uh, asked to do when they are performing for an employer. Professor Jha is also involved in creating a global vision. He shepherds groups of students overseas for education abroad experiences. And he's teaching a class that's part of UNL's global virtual project. The project is funded by the Stevens Initiative, an international effort to build career and global competencies through collaborative learning. In Professor Jha's video conferencing class, Nebraska students learn about the lodging industry alongside their peers in Oman and the United Arab Emirates. Three countries, one classroom. More and more employers are demanding a global understanding and a, and, and a global competence from students. And not every student have the means or the wherewithal or the time to travel um, overseas and do that. So we are now bringing in that that, that globally relevant content and the connection with their global peers is right into the classroom within Nebraska by using this program. Opening doors to another country or culture helps students feel at home in a world where boundaries are blurring. Somebody may choose to work right here in Lincoln or within Nebraska, but they are dealing with people and guests and clients from all over the world. Do they have the situational awareness, the emotional intelligence? to actually deal with this wide variety of people. And essentially, ultimately, it's about that global leadership in a sense that do they understand what it means to work in a globally relevant wor world and workplace. Uh, I am very passionate about global education and study abroad. And once again, that ties right into developing global competence amongst our students. Next up, lab work a deeper look at Professor Jaw's industry knowledge. When it comes to hospitality, personalization is one of the hottest trends in the industry. Professor Jaw has experienced it all, right down to the tiniest detail. Uh, less formal, yet much more personalized. On a shelf in his office, you'll find Pierre, a stuffed animal that greeted the professor when he checked into the Ritz-Carlton Hong Kong. The toy's bow tie was chosen with care representing me because I wear bow ties a lot. And if you notice that Pierre's jacket also has the J monogrammed, which is my last name. Premium hotels use software to tailor amenities based on guest history, providing Darjeeling tea or a specific brand of soda, for example. Technology has made it possible because with, uh, with very, very premium brands, they have really mastered the art of personalization and so uh, what was once only the prerogative of uh, celebrities is now, um, you know, can be done using technology for the average guests. Another trend is spurred by the growth of Airbnb and other vacation property rental platforms. Instead of fighting it, traditional hotels are jumping on board. Ten years ago when Airbnb came into being, the traditional hotel or lodging brands uh, were not very happy about it. But now that Airbnb has established itself as a model and as an option for lots and lots of travelers, uh, we are now seeing the traditional hotel companies also launching Airbnb type brands within their portfolios um, because they understand that there is a section of the traveling public who are looking for something other than the traditional hotel stay. And in the future, how about that robot concierge? Very soon, technologies such as Google Duplex, where artificial intelligence can talk 
with human beings seamlessly uh, is going to dramatically change the way the industry operates. My prediction is in the very near future, I'm talking about within five to seven years, uh, the industry is going to undergo a tectonic shift or a paradigm shift in terms of how we integrate uh, more of the technology with the human element. Um, and the human element is still going to be important, but technology, especially artificial intelligence, is going to play a, a larger role in the way the industry is going to move forward. By staying active in the industry, Professor Jha is able to bring the latest information to his students. I get to work with some very cutting edge and ahead of the curve projects with, this, with the industry, and I bring all of that knowledge right back into the classroom to show students where the industry is going and what they can expect as future professionals. Now it's time for a pop quiz. Random questions, life hacks, and wisdom for all of us. Do you have a habit that makes you happier or more productive? Uh, I try to associate myself with positive and curious people. I can learn from them and then I can also emulate some of their uh, better habits and make myself more productive. Morning or night person? I'm a big morning person. I like getting up early and getting a start of my day before the emails and the busyness of the office comes in. What's a life hack for travel? First of all, um, keep an open mind. And number two uh, is that do a little bit of reading up before wherever you are going. What do you do about jet lag? Water is my very good friend. I drink, I keep drinking lots and lots of water. Also, um, since I do very long distance flying um, um, intercontinental, I try to sleep and rest uh, as much as possible, even on the plane. So I try to actually maintain as normal as possible routine. So if I'm flying somewhere overseas, I would still have dinner on the plane and then try and sleep six, seven, eight hours uh, to have my body rested rather than people who stay up and watch five movies. And finally, graduation day. Reflections on what it means to be a professor. Professor Jha launched his career in India with an internship at a luxury hotel his sophomore year in college. And I suddenly found that I really, really enjoyed not only the industry, but the working with people and, 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 and that part of the industry. So that basically helped me develop my love and my passion for the hospitality industry. And of course, um, after I graduated, I worked uh, for several years within the industry, decided to uh, go back to grad school, and then of course, fell in love with learning and education, and here I am, teaching what I love about. He says his greatest pleasure comes from sending his students out to embark on their next adventure. Oh, I love the ability uh, to actually shape and influence um, young minds and see the students actually go from being a freshman to a senior and then become successful um, in, the, in the industry. And I love uh, playing a small part in their professional journey. That is it for Faculty 101. Thanks to Deepro Jha for sharing his experiences. Next week on the podcast... Like any type of, of resource, we need to keep take good care of it and we need to invest in it why it's important to maintain heritage language. Faculty 101 is produced by the University of Nebraska-Lincoln.